Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Tonight is the last night of the NFL season. Tomorrow night, this time, we'll be going to bed or to a party, depending on where you are. And the season will be done until September. This is a sad, <laughs> this is sad. And it's crazy because I'm really not sure I want to watch the game tomorrow because I'm a sore loser. I want to be greedy. I want to see my Cowboys play there. And I've been thinking here because I haven't known how I felt about Micah Parsons and his podcast. Shout out to Bleacher Report, who is the mindset of getting Micah Parsons as opposed to being on uh, Undisputed. Thank God Micah Parsons was a part of that shit show. I have to say that Bleacher Report has done a great job in marketing him, using him, and making him the best that he could be at doing that. I, I, I really want him focusing in on just being the best defensive end on the planet and helping our team win. But I will say that the content that he put out, some of it kind of pisses me off because I'm from a different generation and I recognize that that sitting down with the team that knocked you out of the playoffs and being like friends with Jordan Love kind of bothers me. It just does, but that's because I'm old school. <clears throat> we didn't see in the off seasons all the players getting together in Arizona or Florida and things like that from different teams all working out and things like we do now. It's a different world. In the same way, this is a different world that being tired can be an excuse. The thing I'll say about Micah Parsons' podcast is it's actually been groundbreaking to get all of these problems that we have on the table. For him to literally ask, CD, your thoughts on how you're going to get better. What, well, you know, what's your thoughts on getting paid and things like that? CD, of course, wants to be the highest paid. Or one of the highest paid. Michael Parsons, get your money. And for people to think that NFL players aren't looking at them getting more money, you're completely wrong. Because in the end, if you get more money, that means there's more money. You're raising the ceiling for all of us. We all, as Joe the fan, think, oh, well, you know, they're overpaid and this, that, and the other. You know, I will say that's not the case as far as the perception versus the reality. When you're talking about what those guys have to do to stay on the field, an average person couldn't do that. But for CD, it, it, it's almost like, A, we're getting an insight into all the problems. The band-aids are off. The bandage is open. They're open wounds. You hear D-Law saying, we were just tired. You hear C.D. Lamb talking about, you know, for me to only get two passes and a half. It wasn't thrown to Dak Prescott. That was thrown at Mike McCarthy. And the being tired part, that goes on coaching as well. When you hear Micah Parsons say, get more people around here, that goes back to ownership to say, we need more help. At least hearing, because Micah Parsons kind of put to bed the whole thing of he wants to be an eagle. You know, here's what I will say also, too. Understand, media, social media, everything out there is trying to get you hooked. They need you to walk. And, and I'm no different. You know, sometimes the way you do your title, okay? I remember 
when Dan Quinn, when the Cowboys shut him down from being able to talk to our tight end coach, my title was Dan Quinn caught stealing. Cowboys locked down. It's true. He was trying to steal coaches from the Cowboys. The Cowboys, they locked him down from being able to do so. It's all stuff that actually happened. But the way you read it would be, oh my God, did Dan Quinn get arrested? No, he didn't get arrested. Cowboys, no, it was no bomb threat when they locked the building down. But they locked down the coaches from being able to be stolen. It's a hook to get you to watch. And Micah Parsons is no different than anybody else. He wants you to watch. Now, Micah Parsons, unlike me, he's got the name and reputation that people want to watch. But he can use you by wearing a, showing up to a basketball game wearing a 76ers. Was it 76ers or was, or what was it baseball? I can't remember what it was. But see, this is the way of getting your attention because then Philly 500 goes off and starts talking about Micah Parsons wants to be an eagle and everything else. And then I go off and I start talking about no, he doesn't and everything else. It was good that he kind of put that to rest that he didn't want to go to Philadelphia mainly because he didn't want to be at home where he couldn't focus in on football. Great reason. And it may be he knows how the Eagle fans are and don't want to know part of that fan base that's crazy. But for Micah to go on and air his grievance about Skip Bayless and the bullshit that you get has been beneficial. You pulled off, you know, that he is the wolf in sheep's clothing. To go through and let you know, hey, my brother, that's his stuff. I, I, I'm a Dallas Cowboy. I want to be here. You know, I want to get paid. I want to play here. I want to win a Super Bowl here. For CeeDee Lamb to go through and say, hey, my mom's thoughts are my mom's thoughts. We don't talk about this. I love it here. Dak is my guy. These are all things that are beneficial. To air them out. To get it so it's known. Now, at the moment, we heard two days ago, 48 hours ago, that the Cowboys were signing Mike Zimmer. There's been some snags on that. It's mainly the contract and the money. We know how, we got Catboy, who's always looking for a bargain, always wanting to, you know, no matter what you, he's one of those kind of people, I believe, I don't know because I haven't had any negotiation, but if you'd like to negotiate something with me, Stephen, I'll be more than happy to. But I believe he's one of those type of people that no matter what price you give them, they still want to negotiate you down because they want to feel like I got something extra out of the deal. It's not about them, you know, going broke and don't have the money to pay it. They have it. But I, he has to feel that he got the best of you. So we'll see if Mike Zimmer gets in here. But from everything that I've gotten this week, to put my cards on the table. What we're hearing from D-Law is we're not tough enough. We're tired. To me, that says I need somebody to get on these guys' ass to perform the most. That's the first thing. Second thing that I get from this is there is some animosity between CeeDee Lamb and Mike McCarthy not quite using him. That's what shots fired from Mike McCarthy. Listen, I'm supposed to be your guy. I get two targets and a half. I know I had some drops. I've got some growing up to do. I got to stop sulking, you know, and, and, and checking out. I have to be that guy that says, Dak, they double cover me, go to go to Brandon Cooks, or Dak, what's up? Give me the ball. Give me give me the ball. I've got to be that guy. If I want the bag and I want the smoke, I've got to be able to deliver and I've got to be the guy. And I hope that that's him waking up and growing too. He admits it. I got to grow up. That's the next thing there. And what gives me hope here is we had problems with this offense changing over. 
We had Kellen Moore, who's the offensive coordinator, who basically had Scott Linehan's office. So it was consistency. So we started kind of over. We kept some of the things, but we changed a bunch of things. And with those changes, you're really working in real time in games and learning. And we didn't start off great with the offense. But by week, after the bye week, we kind of took off. With Dak having the season that he had during the regular season, and with CD and him connecting, that in the second year, it should get better. The next thing that all this says is, and you listen to everybody, Jordan Love. Jordan Love, first time starter, first time in the playoffs, literally bitch slapped you. Told you. Your linebackers weren't there, man. We knew. You got great secondary. Run the ball. Run the ball and make it easier for me. Because once you started running and chewing up those yards, now you got your D-backs that are worried about stopping the running game. It's easier for me to pass. More one-on-one coverage. And that's where you have to come in. And now, what we've learned. Micah can't do it on his own. He needs help. Your biggest problem on the defense is linebackers. You don't have any. Taking safeties and undersized linebackers and saying they can be a run stopper is not a recipe to win. The video that I did earlier here, I pointed out how Peyton Manning had 55 TDs with 11 interceptions, but they couldn't win the Super Bowl. But it was the year that he had nine TDs and 17 interceptions that they got to Marcus Ware that they win the Super Bowl. And that's the other thing that we have to understand. Micah Parsons is great. He's a generational talent. But he cannot do it by himself. He needs a Robin on the other side. He needs another stud that they have to worry about. Or interior-wise. You get that then Micah Parsons can really shine and be that ultimate gadget guy along with stopping the run. And the other thing he learned here too is Jordan Love recognizes running the football. Because we were able to run the football in the Cowboys, we got the win. And that's the next thing that you know. Our running game was subpar. And all this goes back to what Jerry Jones does. We can be in the same boat next year if we do the status quo. The Cowboys do not get the running game addressed, and maybe that's going out and getting, you know, um, Josh Jacobs. Maybe it's getting um, Henry. You got to do something more. You don't have enough draft picks to fill in all these spots. You've got to address these problems. And throwing just draft picks aren't enough. Your players are telling you, here's what we need to succeed, Jerry. Your players, Mike McCarthy, are telling you the problems that they have with you. The players are telling you where we're lacking in endurance. The answers are all right there. Now the question is, is Mike, and maybe Mike, Mike and Mike, and Jerry, and Steven and Will, what you going to do about it, Jerry? What you going to do about it? All right, you good people. You know how we always roll. It's the end of another day. One less day that I'll have. I got so many days behind me. I don't know how many I got in front of me. But I'm glad I was here for this one. Make sure you tell the people you love how much you love them. Because you might not get the chance again, good people. And I love you. God willing, we'll all be here tomorrow to do it again. Peace out.